What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast, episode three. Mm-hmm. Episode three now. Um, today's going to be kind of fun because the first half we're going to do Q&A from our Instagram because we got some questions on there on our last post. And then the second half of the podcast, we're going to answer some questions or just talk about whatever you guys want us to from Instagram live. Yes, on the Becomely Instagram. So we're basically really uh, in tune with all of our social media. Yeah, you can say that. Accounts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's going to be, we're going to try to do more rapid kind of fire. Yeah, we're going to do like rapid fire answering because we don't want to get stuck on one topic that might be boring or we've already covered. So mm-hmm. we're going to look right now on our Instagram and see what questions we got. Oh, uh, you got them. <laughs> First question. How about, how about we each go back and forth and pick one that we want to answer? Okay. That we should talk about. All right. So you can go first. First one was How Was Mamba Mentality, the book by Kobe Bryant that I just got a few days ago. Um, it was, I would say, about, it was hard because a lot of it was a lot about basketball and specific, like about how he guarded certain players, you know, mm-hmm. playing basketball. And I, I didn't really care about that. I didn't care how he kind of matched up or how he thought he matched up against Dwayne Wade. I cared more actually about you his. Don't? I cared more actually <laughs> about his mentality, but so like the fifty percent of the book that was about how he prepared for games, his like rehab, his mentality, his like workouts. I absolutely loved, and I love the pictures. I love how it's put together. But then fifty percent of the book where it was really kind of like, oh yeah, D Wade likes to put his body into me. So when he did that, I would turn this way. I Do didn't you care. think that the title was misleading then? No, because it said how I play. So we talk about how he okay. plays. Well, but enough. um yeah but i just thought like if you love basketball and you were curious about that it was awesome but then the 50 percent of the book that wasn't about that I absolutely loved all right your turn you got a question um yeah uh what are your hidden talents hidden talents drawing for me yeah he's a really good artist and i totally didn't expect that and the funny thing was i don't know if i've talked about this before but he obviously is good at sports like clearly, and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I'm not. So my one thing is art. Like that's my thing, you know. And then of course he's good at that too. But so. our art style is very different. Very. You are you were really good. I have like a painting up in my room of like an elephant that you did, and like remember that? I you like that? realism and like realistic. Super stuff. realistic drawing or like mm-hmm. hands when you draw hands like oh on God. a piece of paper. In high school, I drew my hand on every single piece of paper yeah and i'm definitely like i always grew up as like i wanted to be a cartoonist mm-hmm. I've wanted, i want to be a lot of things at first i wanted to be a paleontologist that dealt with dinosaurs of course i then i wanted to be an astronaut um then i wanted to be a cartoonist and i wanted to actually make a cartoon like spongebob squarepants or something and that was my my dream um and then it kind of went, went from drawing and art i kind of realized actually at 10 years old i realized it which is a pretty mature thing i said i can draw until i'm 80 I can only play sports until I'm about 30 competitively, you know, mm-hmm. maybe 35. So I was like, you know what? I told my mom and my grandma who like really were pushing me for art. Yeah, he would go to like art camps yeah. and, like, and I was like, he was serious about yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, you know what? No, I'll do that later. But right now I'll just focus all my effort on sports. Mm-hmm. But so it, my style is definitely more cartoony and like fun and like He weird. can like think of things and I have to draw what I see. Yeah, it's but. interesting. It is. Now, uh, now what else? What's a hidden talent of yours, though? For tr- me? Yeah. What instantly comes to my mind is, like, a lot of random things. Like, my friends will attest that. Like, they'll say, like, if there's, like, some random craft or some random thing that, like, they need to figure out or know how to do, like, I usually know how to do it, which is really weird. So, like, sewing. Like, I'm really good at sewing. I can sew. I, used to have, I still have a dress form. I took sewing classes. Like, I can knit. I can crochet, I can mosaic, I can, like, I can, I have so many random talents, like, I'm not, like, an expert at any of them, but I think that came from my mom, because my whole life, she was just, like, doing random crafts and things like that, so, (laughs) I can build cabinets, because of my dad. So, basically, your hidden talent is you're just good at everything. Uh, My hidden talent is just really random, like, crafting things. All right, I like that. Does that work? Is that, Mm -hmm. is that an answer? When is a good age to start reaching out to college coaches? I feel like this is more for me. I would say, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they can reply to you as an athlete. They can reply to you after your June 1st, after your sophomore year. So after June 1st in the summer, going into your junior year, that's when they can start replying back to you. Now, you can start re- reaching out to them and sending highlight videos as early as you want. You can start mm-hmm. doing it at age 11. But just know that they can't even reply to you until after June 1st of your sophomore year. So I reached out to them pretty much right around that date, right when I kind of realized they could reply back to me. 
I started doing that like going into my junior year, but it was like super sparse. And I got didn't really get completely serious about it until it was into my like going, I'd say it actually in my junior year. So I would do it mainly junior year, but sophomore year, start getting the CV and highlight video stuff ready. All you. You have a next one? Um, Mimi, what's your juggling record? There's a lot of soccer ones in here. <laughs> what's, what's your juggling record? I think record? it's like four. Four? Yeah. My... I haven't like seriously tried it. You, know? <laughs> you should. You should try to get mm. up to ten. See, but what's I should the point? have like a reward. What's like the if, point? If you can get to ten juggles, I should have to buy you dinner or something. Probably did anyways. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, uh, and then it said my juggling record. I think my juggling record is like three thousand something. I like juggled for like it was you like you actually went that. Long. Took me like three or not three. It took me like thirty minutes. I think. Why would you do that? Just to see what it could <laughs> it be. So and then like to your me. eyes start to dry out because you're trying not oh, to blink as much. Oh my god. Mm-mm. And then you start to lose count. But yeah, I was like a, above three thousand, and it just got to the point of just it was like boredom, but. It's, I mean, that definitely was a good one. Um, well, that was another one of yours. I didn't pick that one. Um, hmm. I got one for you. How well can you speak German? You know some German. Mein Deutsch ist schlecht. <laughs> That's good. Mein Deutsch ist schlecht, yeah. Mm-hmm. That means my German is bad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I can count pretty much as high as I count, want. Count to 20. No. Why not? I, I don't like doing it in front of people. You're not in front of anybody. Yes, I am. <laughs> I can do it. And um, the alphabet? Did I learn the alphabet? I don't no. think so. No, I know numbers and I know like the basic like ordering and I know some foods and stuff. The weird part about numbers is that like once you get into like the 20s, instead of saying 21, you say one and 20. One and 20. Yeah. Two and 20, three and 20, four and 20. So if you get to 145, it's, it's, 100, really it's 105 and 40. So it's, it's like mixed up. So it made it really confusing um, when I would like people would tell me the time and then they'd mm-hmm. be like, Octal and it'd like it'd be like really and I'm like, okay, wait, 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 eight, okay, and then five, eight, eight, five and forty, which means eight, that's eight forty five. Okay, I got it. Eight forty five. <laughs> and it was super confusing. And then I from really have my, to deal with that. Yeah, my German was my German's decent. I can understand it. By the time I got there, he already knew how to speak. So I speak the basic stuff. Yeah, so ich, I didn't really ich, have to do ich it. Ich hätte gern ein Bratwurst, ich hätte gern ein Bier, like stuff like that. And I could say like, ich habe eine <laughs> I, all I can think is like the bad stuff that a lot of my teammates taught me. Mm-hmm. Do you have another question? Um, best tips and tricks for cooking. <laughs> That's random. Well, yeah. the only thing we really cook is chicken. Yeah. You're really good at it. How just do you do it? Practice. Practice? Yeah, just yeah. cook it about like 400 times. Because you have to know it. like the, the I don't timing. have like a set time of how long it could cook on each side. It's literally like I can kind of just see by the color when it's about ready to pull out and like, or like, oh, it should be flipped or the amount of seasoning. Mm-hmm. So just, it's literally, it's funny how every single thing from cooking to soccer to weightlifting practice. to everything is practice. Yeah. Um, last one, I think this is the only one, I, other one I, I really want to answer, but how to get in the zone in a game with the pressure and the noise of people cheering. So like in a big game when like, you know, you play in front of 10,000, 20,000 people, I think there's, it's two things. Like I remember playing my first game in front of, um, my first real professional game at Sacra- uh, at Sacramento Republic against the Cholos actually. And no, it was against Atlas. I was going to say it wasn't. Yeah. yeah it's against Atlas, which is a Liga MX team. We're playing uh, there in front of like 10,000, 11,000 fans. And like, I think it's really good to take in a, a moment when you can, like before a kickoff or at a corner kick or sometime in the game and take a moment to literally soak it in, you know, like look around and like really take in the fans, take in the atmosphere. Yeah, I remember you said you looked about like that big the section. Battalion, the, the battalion, battalion behind the, it was the supporter section right mm-hmm. behind the goal. And I was like, wow, like. I didn't want to, it wasn't like I made it, it was like, wow, like, I've, I've got it, I've, I've achieved a lifelong dream, but, um, and then, but, like, to get in the zone, it's, it's almost just focused, you just focus on the game, I mean, you've played soccer thousands of times up to that point, in thousands of games, so it wasn't hard, it really isn't as hard as you think to get in the zone, you really just kind of do what you've yeah, always really done. Yeah, they really don't pay attention to what's on the outside, because yeah. there's been games where, like, I was standing right next to him the whole time, like, taking pictures or something, and he didn't even know it. 
Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of, it's the same way. I mean, whether I play in front of four people or, or 40,000, yeah, it's, same thing. you just kind of like, you take moments to take it in and the atmosphere and look around. But when you're playing, it's the same game that you've played for 25 years. Mm-hmm. So, ah. all right. So that's like the questions, the good questions that on our Instagram that I wanted to answer. Um, now I think we'll do Instagram live. You can't keep saying good questions though because other people are going to get sad. <laughs> it's sorry. just questions that we haven't answered yeah. before. Yeah. They're not, the other ones aren't bad. All right, so now we'll go. This is our first time going live on a podcast, so it'll be kind of cool. Are you going to like put it on something? or? Yeah, I'm just going to put it right up here on the computer. Oop, got to turn around the camera. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, okay, so now we're live on Instagram as well as kind of live on the podcast gotta get closer what's up guys if you're live on the instagram right now we are filming the against all odds podcast so feel free to ask any questions if you want us to answer them i'm sure they can kind of get the gist of it with the microphone you know i should go on your live on my phone so i can see the questions because it's really far away can you do that both science i don't think you can do i don't think you can do both i can watch your live oh i see what you're saying you know what i'm saying on Um, your mimi account yeah oh wait not not the not, not that one yeah, so anyway, this is the Against All Odd podcast, guys. They're probably like, what's going on? Yeah, if you don't know, Mimi and I do a podcast called the Against All Odds podcast. Feel free to ask any questions right here. We'll answer it live. Favorite compression shorts by Pac Terra Athletics? Uh, Pac Terra Athletics, for sure. 100%. What's Mimi's job? <laughs> Mimi, you talk about your job. And don't don't say, oh, it's nothing. I want you to, to brag about what you do because it's impressive. It's like it's not impressive turn off the yeah. sound i'm trying to how do i do that the side the side button this is your first time with an iphone <laughs> <laughs> well i turned this off um my job is i don't know how to say it okay i'll i'll do it mimi you're not good at talking about yourself <laughs> i no, no. <laughs> mimi basically Armando's runs, on here. <laughs> mimi runs an uh, interior design blog so it's a full blog on interior design and furniture and all that good stuff she has a youtube channel instagram and right now she's really built up a pretty a small audience but it's a pretty dedicated and loyal audience so far and she's starting to monetize it and the whole thing is now now that we she can know that she can make money from it it's about increasing the audience ramping everything up and just scaling it bigger and bigger so she's working 12 10 12 hours a day making blog posts content while i'm just slacking (laughs) off not doing anything exactly mondo wants an invite next time Armando does. Yeah. Hey, tell him if he drives down all the way down here to uh, Encinitas, then he can uh, yeah, pop you on could the be podcast. In our podcast. We need other people. <clears throat> What's this one? What what club was I linking with this year? You what think? are you drinking? <laughs> Nothing. It's a secret. M- Mimi drinks a probiotic thing for her gut and health. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> when are you coming back to Sacramento? I don't know. How do you have discipline? To... Oh, that's a good one. How what? do you have the discipline to train when it's all snowy in Portland? Oh, it sucks. I mean, I'd, be, I'd be 100% it's lying if I said that it was the same if, as if it's good weather. Because it sucks to wake up when it's snowy or rainy or freezing cold. And it's literally 35 degrees outside, mm-hmm. rainy, and the sun hasn't come up. And then you have to put on 15 layers and then go drive all the way down there and train. Um, versus down here in San Diego where I wake up and it's like perfect weather every single day. Um, so it's it definitely is not – it's definitely harder. But like I've talked about before, if you just treat it that this is just something you have to do, like brushing your teeth in the morning. Yeah, you don't have a choice. It, it, you don't have a choice. This is what you do if you want to play soccer You know, for longer than a couple years. Someone said, how's your soccer journey been so far? You got to just go back and watch all of his YouTube videos. <laughs> <I> think, uh, <laughs> That's what the channel's for. Yanny versus Laurel. Remember that? Yeah. Which one, which one were you? We were the same. Which one were you? Huh? Which one were you? Yanny? I was Yanny. I was yeah, I was Yanny. Yanny. <laughs> that was funny. I was like, what do you think? Yanny or your... Uh, what do you think about Yanny or Laurel? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is great. This is a good there's podcast. A street, there's a street in San Diego called Laurel. And I was like, yeah, shall I, we're going to go turn on Laurel up here. And he's like, you mean Yanny? <laughs> Is a field you train on turf or grass? It's really cool in San Diego. Everywhere you go, um, and pretty much California as well, and a lot of places in America, a lot of the turf fields around here, uh, or a lot of the fields around here are turf. So they're, that means they're kind of public because you can't really mess up turf as easily as you can mess up grass. Mm-hmm. So most of them are turf here. And everybody asks too, 
how do you get all these open fields and how do you have to pay for they're them or just anything everywhere around my house i don't know why yeah they're, they're well a lot of places do i mean there's a lot of turf fields in california and in nice like cities like this that are public and then there's also high schools so you kind of like know where to go and then in the mornings if you go at 8 a.m 9 a.m on a school day everybody's in school so like i'm fortunate that i can go at any part of the day any time of the day um, and I can go to these fields that are usually, you know, taken by club teams or taken or busy uh, at busier times of the day. But I can go when all you guys are in school. So I'm a little fortunate like that. And then like if it's a weekend or something and I know like the field will probably get busier, I'll get my training session done at like 7 a.m. So I'm out of the field at 830 when most of the people are starting to come to the field. So because I like the open space, I like to have a lot of space and goals to myself. But yeah, it does suck. It's always kind of awkward to like filming when there's like kids running around yeah. and stuff like that too. <laughs> there was like this mom workout group there last time. <laughs> yeah, the moms, yeah. Good for them though. Do you see anything? Everyone keeps hashtagging stop ignoring Mondo. What's Mondo want? What does Mondo want? Keep it going. That's all he said. This would be a good one. I don't know if you'd want to answer it, but huh. they said what would be your all-time like best starting 11? Of players? Yeah. That's... I don't want to go. That's too complicated. It's too complicated. <laughs> Everyone just keeps talking about Mondo. <laughs> why isn't Why isn't he here then? Armand, hey, if Armando wants to drive down, Omar really wants to drive down and they get should on the both, podcast They should too. both be in it. That'd be good. Do we a could round have, table. We could have two microphones going. Yeah. We should do that. Armando. <laughs> Favorite league in the world to watch? EPL. I really like Bundesliga too. How fast can you run a mile? What was your best time? Uh... I think the best time I've ever ran a mile is like five minutes and 15 seconds. That was back in like high high school, college. I haven't that's tested. Crazy. I've never. That's the last time I've tested my mile. It was back at like senior year well, or freshman you, you year of college. You always do the two mile. Uh, so do sometimes. you not run? Like if, when you do the two mile, do you not run as fast as if you were just to do one? Like do you save? I run fast. I run my miles faster when I do the two mile. Really? No. You, stop it you're so annoying yeah of course you save a little bit of energy when you're the two mile alone or partner training uh it's, that's a good question um i like both i really like both because if you're doing uh you're like partner training there's drills that are so much fun with i think the best part about training is like that first touch passing and like distribution of the ball mm-hmm. i think that's the most fun so when you're with a partner or a group of guys you get to do like the best drills but yeah. when you're by yourself, you kind of have to do like the dribbling drills and then like your own shooting and stuff like that. It's a little bit slower paced, so it's not as much fun. But then you can get so many reps. You can do exactly what you want to do. So I think it's good to mix both of those. It's like an off season. I think it's good to get some partner training, some small group trainings, and some solo trainings. Someone said, "How do I turn the comments off?" <laughs> comments off. All oh, these on the on the live. <laughs> That's funny. Um, how often a week should you be training for any type of speed? It's not very specific. Well, like if I, do, oh, people ask so many, how much should I be training? How much should I be working out? It's always everything is listen to your body. I mean, do as much as you possibly can while listening to your body. That's the that should be the golden rule of how much should you train. And if you want to work on speed. You know, do as much as you can. Do plyometric stuff. Go out there and do agility drills. Go and do some like sled pushes and some parachute runs and do some dynamic explosive weightlifting and, and like powerlifting and Olympic lifting. Um, but then listen to your body. You can't be going. Some there was like a comment that goes, "So I see you're doing like one training a day. Why not two trainings a day?" It's like, of course, like more is better. Yeah. But you have to be smart as well and listen to your body and do as much as you can. Yeah, like Ronnie Coleman will only spend one hour in the gym a day. We watched the Ronnie Coleman documentary <laughs> last night on Netflix. That was a good documentary. Did you like it? Yeah, but I I. I was just sad afterwards. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it was really depressing. You guys don't know who Ronnie Coleman is. He's this like, he's an eight time Mr. Olympia champion, like a Best huge bodybuilder. Mr. Olympia in history. And he basically, the way he worked out was like, took his body to the absolute limit and just pushed as far as he could with the heaviest weight he possibly could. And now at like age 50, he can barely walk because he's just put his body under so much stress. And it was kind of cool. They asked him like, hey, would you, do you regret like anything about like what you did. And he's like, the only thing I regret is I had 800 pounds on my back and I tried to squat it 
and I was going to go for two reps and I got the and I got the two reps and it was pretty easy. And in my head, you know, I already told myself I did the two reps, so I racked it. And my only regret is that I didn't try to go for five reps. See, but like if you see him now, he can't walk. Yeah. His legs are numb. He's gotten like ten back surgeries, neck surgeries. He it takes painkillers every couple hours of his entire life. Like he yeah. has to use crutches around his house. It's the saddest thing. And, and I yeah. I mean, I don't know because you know what it's like to sacrifice for something like that much, but like that doesn't seem, not that much. But that I, doesn't seem worth it to me because he's only like forty something. Well, it's not worth it to you, but if it's worth it to him, and he's a, has no regrets about it, and his only thing is the, that he didn't wish he pushed harder. The thing is, I think he's being stubborn about it because he would never admit. Why would he admit that it was a mistake? Why would he admit that he tried too hard? Because so to let other everybody else know that he made a mistake. And yeah, learn but from he him. could just be so stubborn and so but just you, obsessed but you can, that he would like say he's that. still working out now. I know, and it, he shouldn't be. Yeah, but. I think that he's just got See, the we, mind. We disagree I, with yeah, we this disagree. so much. Because I'm all about it. Like, that's what it takes for him. I mean, you can't argue with him. He's got eight times Mr. Olympia champion. He is no, the I know, best in the world. No, I know, but like even other bodybuilders are saying, like, could he have had that body and not, like, Well, other bodybuilders can say so whatever much. they want. They're not eight times Mr. Olympia. I know, but they're also not stuck on crutches in their own house. Exactly. It's what you want. And the people that ah, do I it. I could not understand that. The people that, that are like you, that. It's like Michael ever... Jordan. Michael Jordan like, has sacrificed all these relationships in his life and has so many people that don't like him because like close people and has lost so much. But do you think he had to lose them? I think he... I mean, the thing is, you can't like tell someone who has that mentality to like dial it back a little bit. No, I know. But I'm just saying like... In order to be Michael Jordan, do you think you had to lose all of your relationships? Like, do you think that that was necessary? Probably, yeah. Because it, I haven't seen anybody else become the best in the world without sacrificing that much or sacrificing their body or having a terrible, terrible other part of their life. I just would be far more impressed if you could become like the best version of yourself and not sacrifice the rest of your life the, the rest the last 60 I, years of your life see, I, or the people that you care about in your life like I, I don't understand yeah I, mean, uh, I just don't I get it you guys I, have to watch it's a new thing on on netflix you have to watch it i yeah. mean it's you go from watching him at his peak to like watching him now and he can't even like talk without pain like yeah. he is in so much pain all the time and like I don't know what it's like to to put a trophy before anything else. Like, I don't get that at all. But you do. You totally get it. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I would put my body through that. I don't think I personally would, but I respect him doing that. I, see, I don't. <laughs> I look at it, I'm like, he's stupid. Yeah. Well... Hey, whatever you want to think. Yeah, but I don't know. I always say it at the end of the I day. I saw someone said they were siding with me on here. Yeah. Someone th does. Most people probably do side with you. But then I'm just saying, like, yeah. you can't argue with eight, eight Mr. Olympia championships. I know. It just breaks my heart. I just think he got too caught up in it. Um, I'm not answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that one, too. <laughs> That's a bad When are you doing Two Minute Tuesdays? I'm not going to do, uh, do any Two Minute Tuesdays this off season. Because this off season, I'm, I'm just going to film like vlog, longer videos, 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minute long videos, and just show my workouts, my training, all that stuff. Because I'm going to do this because off season is such a Danny's unique... on here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, just screw whatever I'm saying. Hi, no, Danny. <laughs> no, like I for off season, like you're, it's such a unique time because like you can work out and train every single day, and I can film mm -hmm. those every single day. When I'm in season. I have so much free time and I can't always film my team trainings or my team workouts. Mm -hmm. So I need to have like another for, like another form of content. And so Two Minute Tuesdays, I don't want to upload a Two Minute Tuesday and then take away time for me filming or editing or yeah. a, vi that, a, it would a video away. spot away from a vlog. Because I think that a vlog would be a little bit more beneficial to more people in seeing the full off season program than seeing... Uh, um, a two minute Tuesday, even though I love two minute Tuesdays and they're gonna come back, but this off season is just gonna be the off season series. Danny said he's gonna come over over here, yeah. Okay, yeah, if he can make it up and before, like, he's got 20 minutes before we end the podcast, he can get up here, yeah. Um, someone wants to know if you're gonna do a meetup in San Diego. That's a good question. Canada, Solana Beach, Carlsbad. I probably will. I probably will do one. It's always hard because like getting the field, especially now because the numbers get bigger and bigger. So we can't just yeah. go to a little park. And like we, the reason why we usually have open fields right now is because it's usually while kids are at school. But if we did a meetup on the weekend, those fields wouldn't be open. Yeah. That's you the end. Because like, yeah, exactly. So I'd need to so book a like field and actually maybe buy something and then set it up. It's a lot of work. I do want to do it because I love doing meetups. It just is a lot of work. 
Mondo's just living for this right now. Mondo? Yeah. <laughs> he just likes the attention that yeah. he gets sometimes whenever we say his name like this. So let's just ignore Mondo now. Okay. Don't say his name anymore. Hashtag forget Mondo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we need some more questions on here. Yeah, ask questions, guys, if you guys want to ask. Someone said, am I ever mean? I'm not mean. I'm nice all the time. <laughs> No, I know, but the, the I think what people are saying is like sometimes you have your like sense of humor is like you don't like a lot of times giggle after you make a joke, you know? So oh, people yeah. can take that. Like your like dry sense of humor. I have a be, very dry sense of humor. Yeah, that can be taken as like some people could see that as mean, you know. Yeah, but I like can see that. I think it's funny. I think I'm hilarious, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um Okay, I saw a question on here like 20 minutes ago, but I think it was a good one. Mm. I don't know if you have an answer for it, but they said favorite player in U.S. soccer history, but for the U.S. Clint Dempsey. I loved Clint Dempsey. I watched him like it was my freshman year of college. I, I like watched a like a mini documentary on YouTube about him mm-hmm. just from him being from Texas and all this stuff about him. And I just like really f- fell in love with his story. Did he end playing with Galaxy? No, you're thinking of Landon Donovan. I am. Yeah. <laughs> What's but, the difference? <laughs> <laughs> Landon Donovan, I honestly, it's going to sound weird, and I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but like, I, and I love Landon Donovan, like what he could, what he did for US soccer, but like something about him, I just, I don't know. I can see him bugging you for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He bugged me. Yeah. I, I can totally see And I'm see sure that. he's a great guy, but like just his mannerisms or whatever just bugged me. And, and it's, it's like, you know, that you everybody has people like that. I'm that person for a lot of people that watch videos on YouTube. Like for whatever reason, yeah. I just bug a lot of people and then they just don't like me. Luckily, it's a few people, not a ton. Someone says, Mimi ever megged you? Yeah. She has. All the time. Yeah. You have, actually. Mm-hmm. Just when I'm walking around. Yeah. Like, with, when we walk, if there's, like, a rock or, like, a, a leaf or something, it'll end up megging someone. Mm-hmm. Danny. Someone said. said Danny said. What did he say? <laughs> Tell us about your Halloween weekend or I will. <laughs> uh, once somebody said, uh, club or high school soccer. So, if you earn uh, a... I'm going to go with... What do you think? Whichever one will make you better. That's a good answer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are doing club soccer, or if you're in between, you can't. You have to. You're in a situation that you have to choose between club or high school soccer. If you're not getting played on your high school team, and it's more important to you to get playing time, to get better than play on your club team. <laughs> right. No. I'm trying to guess. No. <laughs> yeah, you're off. Vice versa. Kind of. I mean, I see what you're saying, but you're got. You want to challenge yourself, but you also want to get playing time. So. You can do club soccer and oh wait, wait. yeah, go for Stopped it. Recording. You can do club soccer and high school soccer at the same time. Like you can do both of those. But I think what you're saying is like academy, academy soccer. You have to choose between high school or oh, academy. See, I don't know how any of that works. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I ideally, what the best, usually the universal piece of advice is, is to play for the the highest level you possibly can. You know, if you can get to that D A team, the development academy. But what if team, you're not playing on it? Whole sorry <laughs> you kill me i always do this be like watch a movie and i'm like Killing why me. is she going in there and then it's like she went in there because yeah mimi is the best to watch movies with <laughs> you are the worst to watch movies well because i stay silent and i watch the movie yeah it sucks <laughs> do you know it's it's terrible so i you, hate it so anyway if, I, I bite my tongue the whole time we're watching something that's because most of the time with the questions you ask about the movie Later on in the movie, they'll answer I know, but them. I like to just discuss it. But then when you're discussing, you might miss some topics. And you miss something, and then you'd be like, wait, what is... What's the what point is... of watching it together, then? For the company. You're right next to it. That's why movie theater's the best. Because I can't talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> you suck. Um, no, but like, so like I was saying about the Development Academy, ideally, usually the best piece of advice is to play at the highest level that you possibly can play at. Having said that, like what Mimi said, if you are in a situation that you're on the bench the entire time with your development academy team, you're not getting any game time in, sometimes it's better to take a step down a level and to play with a lower team that you can kind of be more of the star, get more touches, be more of like involved on the offense and not just kind of like a utility player on the bench. And I've done both. I've done both in my life. I've gone to Sacramento Republic, you know, when I was just trying to get up to the pro level. And I've been the utility player that barely gets into trainings, didn't play any games, but I learned a ton. And I've also taken the step down and played with teams where I've really developed more because I was like the, the leader, the man who played more and more. And it's, you definitely can do both. So ideally play with the higher level team, but you know in your gut where you think that you will develop the most. So kind of listen to your gut at the same time. Danny wants an Oreo review. <clears throat> People are 
people are into it. Here's a here's a good one. Who? I want to answer this one. Wait, you're you're <clears> ruining <throat> the live stream. I know, but this I gotta read it. From Andy, you're 27, meant to be in the prime of your career, yet you don't have a team, non-offensively. No, it's true. I don't have a team right now. What's the plan for 10 years from now since you don't have a degree yet with all all this with no disrespect? And that's a good question. I think that's a really good question. Well, I think, Andy. <laughs> I think that was word, worded really well. So I thank you for wording it well, Andy. Um, to be 100% honest, the way that Become Elite has already, the trajectory that's already been going, I won't need to worry about a degree yep, from college matter. so even like i'm building my brand and building the company and the program sales and the youtube and all this stuff it's already gotten to the point where it's better than it would have been if i've gotten a real nine to five job in the business world i think that's a good way to say it so don't right worry now, there's just no <laughs> there's just no point to go back to school and finish that yeah and i can always but with the way everything's working out right now it wouldn't make, I honestly wouldn't make even financial sense to go get a, a, a real job. It'd be better to continue doing what I'm doing. And that's a nice way to say it. And so in terms of soccer, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to retire from what I'm doing with soccer. But that's also what kind of Become Elite is around too. I want to build Become Elite. And, you know, I obviously I love training and playing and being a professional soccer player. And that also helps me with my business and my side hustle of this. So. Well, the, the thing is, too, like, because they're saying, like, you're in the prime of your soccer. Yeah, Armando, don't worry about Shelly. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's balling. <laughs> um, but you're also, like, in the prime of, like, building your company. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like there's no point now to just stop and go do something else because. Yeah. And a lot of people, I mean, just because I'm not spending a lot of money and showing it um, doesn't mean that. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, but morning, don't you hold on? But don't you think the degree is important for you? If it, I mean, what's it's a the what's, thing. Well, it's a no, thing. well, what's the point of a degree? Well, that's the thing. But some people like they just want it just to have it because it means something to them. Yeah, but that's for fine. you, it doesn't matter. The whole you don't care. The, yeah, my idea behind a degree. I mean, the only thing I would go back to school for, the only thing I could possibly think, is to get that so I could then coach collegiately. Yeah. If I, I wanted to do that. But I, I think my main thing is I want to do become elite training facility and go that way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and like so I know some people whose like parents all they want is for their kid to graduate college because it means something yeah, to them. So, yeah. but like your parents are totally supportive of what you're doing. Yeah, so and and so like my and my because my dad said it too and everything. The whole point of a degree for me, it doesn't. The only thing that a degree really for is for is to good on your resume and so you can learn something so you can go into the real world and get a and different job. And I got job. my degree, so we're good. Yeah. We're but fine. um but yeah, so if you can get a job without a degree that sets you up well, then what's the point of a yeah, degree? I don't think yeah, I don't think a degree is everything. Especially yeah. now with social media and all the things we got. Yeah. Um, Where would the training facility be located at? That's a good question. We've actually talked about that quite mm. a lot because he wants a little bit of land. He wants to at least have a field or a mini field or a half field or something. And hopefully like an actual facility. Mm -hmm. And we love San Diego, but a lot of times there is not much land here. And if there is, it's it, yeah. really, really expensive. So there's definitely other places in the U.S. that we both really love. I mean, I love Portland just as much as he loves Portland on the good days. Mm -hmm. We love Seattle. We love... I don't know, just the whole West Coast into. Yeah, yeah, but um, I ideally would probably take the hit in. I mean, this is a long ways away that I'd open up a huge training facility, but I would start small, um, and I would want it ideally in San Diego area. Because you want it in like a soccer hub too. Yeah. You want to do it where it's convenient. Because yeah, for like the sport. yeah, I was talking to my dad. It's like yeah, you can get cheap land out in Hood River, Oregon. But, but how many yeah. soccer players are looking to really develop their game out in Hood River? Not saying that there aren't any, but the number is definitely fewer than in San Diego or L.A. Uh -huh. um, so I think that getting like a, a tight, smaller space place that just has enough of what you need and then a field, you're set. So that's kind of like my train of thought right now. And as it grows and everything grows, you know, you can ramp it up, ramp it up, ramp it up until it's like Alpha Elite Gym over in Houston, Texas with Christian Guzman, like that size. Yeah. One day. Because you can always like, yeah, you don't have to buy it. You can rent out a place too. Yeah, like exactly. That's how you There's how ways to do it. Mono's just living for this Ma comment section right now. He is, huh? This is great. We should add Mondo. I don't I almost said we should add Mondo to the... Oh, he's leaving. Bye, Mondo. <laughs> Finally. Jesus. <laughs> um, 
Now we can have a real discussion. Tell tell people about what the video you just made about how we uh, we did the bedroom. Oh yeah. yeah, talk about that. Oh my god, I loved it. I'll okay, look, I'll so, look for a different. I'll okay. look for the next topic. You talk about that. Okay, so Shelly, okay. So on my channel and like on my Instagram and everything and just for fun, I like to just design rooms and kind of put together like mood boards or shopping boards. And Shelly was like, why don't we do a competition and see who can do it better for a room for both of us. So we did that over on my channel and he actually had a lot of fun doing it. I did, yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to hate his life. Like I felt so bad for him, but he like kept insisting that we do it. And then the whole time he's like man, I need more time doing this. Like, <laughs> it was fun. And um, I put the video up on my channel and you can go vote on whose room you like better. And it's funny because a lot of the girls are liking mine and a lot of the guys are liking Shelly's. Mm -hmm. I think because he put a huge TV in his room. But yeah, go watch it. Yeah, it was a, it, the video came out really well. Yeah. And I know you, you put a ton of time into that. Yeah, because I, I told him I don't normally like editing at all. Like I hate editing, but I was like really enjoying editing that video. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Is there any other good? Um, yeah, I, there was a good one. I forgot what it was because I was listening to you. You're not very good at multitasking. <laughs> I don't know if you should be the one reading all the Hold questions. Hold on, it was a good one. He's not oh, it was about my groin, about how I'm feeling with injury wise. So Love you look for the next that. one. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, to be a hundred percent honest, about my groin and lower abdominals, that was the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just. You really like that probiotic drink, It's huh? all gone. Yeah, I know. I can hear it. <laughs> um, Armando, I thought you left. What are you Mondo. doing? Get out of the live chat. Um, uh, my groin and my lower abdominals was like the worst thing I've ever gone through. Like it took, I said, 12, no, 13 or 14 months from when it happened until I really felt 100%. And two 13, surgeries. Yeah, 13 and 14 months. <laughs> So that was, it was terrible. But right now, over the last, I'd say the last four weeks, maybe even eight weeks, last two months, I felt 100%. And it's been the best I've felt since that off season back in 2016, where I was headed into St. Louis. And now, so I'm so happy. I'm such a great place. I've never, you know, I can, I'm striking the ball with my left foot. I'm doing sprints. I'm doing squats again. Everything yeah. has been feeling really good. Yeah, and I've now, heard like, you, like, complain once. Yeah, and I mean, I get a little bit of soreness right where that first incision mark was in my abs. But mm -hmm. the doctor says that you'll get that little soreness, you know, for the rest of your life. And that it's just like Sounds understanding fun. it. And it just honestly feels like a, uh, a sore muscle anywhere else. But it's just weird. It's on the left side right there. And you give it a day of break once you start to feel that mm -hmm. or whatever. And it feels amazing the next day. And I just have to warm up a little bit longer. The only thing is if I go straight out to the field and hop straight into a sprint or hop straight into like a hard left-footed strike, I can feel it. Yeah, he gets his bands out every yeah, time. Yeah, so I have to warm up. I have to really do a warm up with purpose. But then once I'm warmed up, I'm, you know, it takes five minutes to warm up, 10 minutes to warm up. I'm 100%. I've never been this... Or never, never been. It's been a long time since I've felt this good. So I'm I'm buzzing right now. And I want to keep this. So my whole off season is tailored around keeping this this yeah. feeling going. What were you laughing at? There's just stupid comments in here. Oh, I bet. And then someone noticed I was trying to hide it. So they did. <laughs> yeah. What's funny, though, is like sometimes on here, like you'll be telling a story about like your groin or something. And then I'll like see a comment and start like giggling about that. Mm -hmm. But then you think I'm giggling at your story. And then yeah. You get all like fired up. You're like, yes. So then my groin. Maybe he thinks like, my jokes are funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, it's not your story. Have I ever listened to Gary Vaynerchuk's motivational speeches? Oh, don't even. We're not even going to go with. No, we're skipping. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big. Skip. Five seconds. No, please. I'm a. I love Just Gary Vee. Like I love That's Gary Vee. I love Gary Vee. Okay. I've talked to. I get a Gary V rant about three times a day. <laughs> I just think his mentality is right on everything. Yeah. Everything. I just think it's a little repetitive. It is, yeah. Everybody yeah. calls in, what do I do? I don't have time. It's like, you have time. What do you do every day? Every time. Yeah. It's like, okay, we get it. You have time. <laughs> Save money. Yeah. Great guy, but it's the same thing. Um, what workouts do you do for your arms? I haven't done a bicep or tricep exercise, like s strictly arm exercise. In a long time, because I feel yeah. like I we did. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> I good. did a lot of arm workouts um, back when my arms were sticks, and now I've gotten to the size like they're. I think like my arms are perfect size for a soccer player. So I just I do pull ups and push ups, and I do bench and yeah. stuff like that. That they're, you just don't them. like directly do like yeah 
arm yeah, workouts yeah. are like. Because if I have extra time to do those extra workouts now, it's more focused of I, I add in prehab exercises, mobility stuff now versus trying to, you know, pump up my arms a little bit because I don't need that anymore. You know, I'm, my, I'm feeling like great body weight, everything like that. Good for you, babe. Yeah. I'm excited. Good for you. All happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're already 40 minutes into our podcast. Yeah, this, the live made it go really fast. I know. Should we end that? Should we actually just stick to our... No, let's keep going. I'm, I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, but then they might not watch our podcast if it's all... What? Already seen. Already seen? Like they've already seen it. I don't okay, know what you're talking about. stuffy person <laughs> needs to chill. <laughs> Best for the if I could move to any country to play soccer, where would you move to? To be honest, this season, if I could choose anywhere in the world, it'd be U.S. What? Yeah. But oh, okay, well, let me take that reverse back. that. Obviously, if I could choose any league or any thing in the world, I go EPL or La Liga or Bundesliga. But like realistically, if I had to choose where to go based off of everything, it would be in you know obviously go to a different country and play lower leagues or play lower leagues in the U.S. I've done a lot of outside the U.S. Um, and I want to play, you know, I think the best thing is playing in front of friends and family and playing in front of you and, and your family and my family and friends. I'll be there wherever. Yeah. So <laughs> ideally I would want to play in the U S but again, if an opportunity comes up in Cambodia, I'll fly out to Cambodia tomorrow. And so, and that's everyone but goes, hopefully but, somewhere but hopefully closer. somewhere close. Cause I haven't played in front of my mom and dad in over a year, a year and a half, I think. Mm-hmm. So I want to, I, you know, I want to play in front of my mom and dad again. My voice crack. Oh, he just <laughs> loves his mom and dad so much. Yeah. What? What ab workouts did you do? I actually did an ab workout, just a, a strictly ab circuit after my training session this morning, and I filmed it. So that will be in episode seven of the off-season series that hopefully will come out um, Saturday, maybe Sunday, if I'm lazy. <laughs> so uh, be sure to watch that because this is a pretty good circuit. It's quick, but um, it was good. Calling you a mama's boy now. Yeah. Oh my guy, god. <laughs> Danny. Somebody goes, what is the most useful skill for a fullback? And I get questions like that a lot. I uh, let me answer. You answer. You answer. Mimi has heard this probably a lot, and I think you can nail this one. Oh, well, that's a lot of pressure. No pressure. Most useful skill for a fullback. I would say there is not just one most useful skill. I think there's a range of of useful skills and you need to be good at all of them to be a good fullback perfect yep <laughs> i don't even know what a fullback is that's, uh, <laughs> that's, why, that's why i play you're a fullback yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was in like american football no oh yeah that is a fullback too but i uh, know do you oh. see where it can get confusing though yeah but i don't know that was a little disappointing <laughs> I but, nailed but the answer. But Mimi's answer is 100% correct. Like, I mean, nailed it. people always say, like, Matt, what's the most important aspect um, to be, get, become a pro? Or Matt, what's the most important skill for a winger or a right back? And it's depending on you as a player, and it's dependent on, like, everything. Like, if you're just great at crossing or dribbling up the wing, like, you can't just have that because you need defending. You need to be an all-around player, and then you have your specialty. Yeah. For example, I can, you know... I don't want to toot my own horn, but I can pass the ball okay. You know, I'm. Is that how you toot a horn? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can pass the ball well. You know, you know, I'm I'm fast. I'm athletic. I'm decently strong. I can. Uh, I am a decent dribbler. I'm decent going one on one. I'm decent with whipping the ball in. So every part of that is like part of a fullback. You know, I'm real. I'm decent at one v one defending, mm-hmm. and then I have my specialties, which is just kind of like my engine up and down the side, as well but as probably you a need move to and work cross. On- you want to make your crosses better, and you want to make your first touch better. <laughs> yeah, where are you going with this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to guess what you're gonna say. You just perfect no, to everything. No, no. I'm, well, yeah, I need to do that. But like, I'm talking about what's the most important thing, and that um, there is. Well, no yeah, important. but you, yeah, but I'm just saying that you, yeah. you're supposed to look at what you need. We're to work trying on. to go like this, and then you're off like this. No, now. no, no. Because you're saying there's always things you need to be good at, and yeah. if you find that you're not good at like three of them, then try to focus on those three, while also doing yeah the other yeah, four because yeah. there's but seven anyway. total. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's the end of our podcast. Thank but you like, so much. I hate that. I was like, what's the most important thing? There is no most important. Get everything no. up to the proficient level of a yes. pro, and then you can have specialties of whatever All you like. All seven areas. Yeah, and there's fullbacks that are faster. You know, that's their thing. There's fullbacks that are really good at just whipping in a ball, and there's fullbacks that are maybe dribblers. There's fullbacks that like to cut in. There's fullbacks that are maybe even slower and more defensive. It's just whatever your style is, you know, be good at that style. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we could end it because we're already at 45 minutes in yeah. our podcast. We'll do one more. One more question. You're just loving it. You I, just like attention. I love Q&As. I love Q&As, even though... Okay, you know. one last question. Mimi plays soccer. She lives on homes. Honestly, I was going to say for a video that you should try to teach me how to do something. In soccer? And see if I can do it, but I don't want to embarrass myself. Yeah. Yeah, we're You're done. welcome. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Against All Odds Wait, podcast. why don't you sign off your live and then we'll sign off on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> just gonna end it all right bye guys <laughs> honestly i want to know if you guys enjoy that or if you thought it was annoying mm-hmm. or if you'd rather us just do our typical podcast just let us know because we are trying to figure out yeah. what you want we, we just thought that you know we'll try something new but see that was fun because it was interactive it was interactive i did like that it's easier to come up with topics but i also sometimes like the, the pause in between you know when you're yeah. waiting for a good question we're trying to like find the good question or we'll like laugh and people can't understand why we're laughing at the comment so yeah, like Mimi just said, let us know if you never want to see this type of video again or podcast again. Let us know if you maybe once in a while, once a month, this podcast comes back or let us know if you want to see this more often. Or we can just do more lives too. Yeah, do more lives. So let us know what you thought. This was the Against All Odds podcast. Episode three. Perfect. Peace. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> you <are>. Bye-bye now. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Mm, no. And, Bye. And, and, and goodbye. Bye. Good, 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 goodbye. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs>